This time on Finnegan's Garage, we're back in Alabama to track test the rubber duck, and we're trying for that coveted eight second pass. Will we get it? I don't know, I really don't know. But we're damn sure gonna try. Like no more crutches. I'm limping, I'm hobbling, but no more crutches. So here's the deal. Yesterday, my doctor gave me clearance to go drive a race car. Not one with a clutch, an automatic car. We only have one of those. And that is a car that I've failed to ever run an eight second pass in. So today, that's the goal. I can walk without crutches. I have them right now just because I don't know why. It was only yesterday I was told I could start walking without crutches. And I gotta be honest, my leg still feels broken. <laughs> like I, I still feel like something's moving in there, kind of like it was when I walked down the mountain the day I broke it. So uh, I'm kind of still using the crutches, but I'm gonna drive a race car. We are at Alabama International Dragway in Steele, Alabama. This is my 1967 Pontiac Firebird. If you guys don't know the history of the rubber duck, let me tell you all about it. This is a car that David Newburn and I, along with uh, a couple other people, including Bo Shears, pulled it out of a barn above Paradise Dragway in Calhoun, Georgia. It had sat in a barn for about 16 years. The car belonged to the owner of Paradise Dragway, Otto, who's no longer with us. And uh, it hadn't run, like I said, in 16 years. When I bought it, we got it running. At the time, it had an unknown big block Chevy with one Dominator on it and uh, got it running and took his widow, Granny, for a ride down the drag strip at like 10.30 at night, the same day we got it running. We did some burnouts on tires that weren't really round and had a good old time. After that, Newbert and I road tripped this thing all the way to Texas, but not before the engine that came in the car ate the camshaft about eight miles into the trip. He and I ended up swapping this 540 Dart motor into this car in a campground parking lot, and we were nearly successful before we got thrown out and banned for life. So uh, add that to the list of places I can't go back to. Uh, we road tripped the car all the way to Texas with the new motor and a Gearstar Turbo 400 along with the gear vendors behind it. Cruised the whole way, really didn't have many problems. Got our butts kicked at the drag strip when we tried to race the Crusher Camaro. And then when we came home, we got the bright idea to go do Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0 for an episode of Roadkill. And uh, we threw the supercharger on it. This is the original blower off of Blasphemy. And went to Rocky Mountain Race Week, ran a bunch of nine second passes. I was genuinely shocked that this car ran nines because uh, we really don't know what's in that motor. I know there's good pieces in it, but couldn't tell you what the compression is, couldn't tell you how big the cam is. The engine builder disappeared. I have no paperwork on it. Uh, I just know that you know we put boost to it and it lived and, it, and it's lived since then. We filmed an episode of Faster with Finnegan where Newburn Cotton and I back half this car, put brand new ladder bars in it, brand new QA1 coilovers, got rid of the leaf springs, and then we came back to this track and ran 904, which is the same ET we ran during Rocky Mountain Race Week with a much smaller blower pulley. So the car got significantly better with the new suspension upgrades. It's much quicker, 60 foots better, and is running the exact same ET with less boost. However, we had severe fuel starvation issues during that shoot and the carburetors were not happy. So in between that faster with Finnegan shoot and today, I sent the carburetors, they're a pair of quick fuel, 4150 style carbs. I sent those to my friend, John Moreland at CNJ Engineering in California. John, in my opinion, is one of the best carb tuners on the planet. Um, blows my mind what he can accomplish even when he has to build a set of carburetors for a motor owned by a guy who can't tell him any information. You know, John wants the specifics. You know, he wants to know what gear is in the car. He wants to know what the compression ratio is of the motor. Cam specs if you got them. Most of that info I didn't have. I gave it to him anyway. And uh, he shipped the carbs back. We put them on, motor fired right up. It sounds better than it ever has. And today we'll find out is this thing running better? Can we finally run the magical eight second pass that I've been striving for with this car for the last few years? 
I think we can do this today. The weather is excellent. Uh, the sun is out. There's not a lot of people here. We're at another private test session, which as you guys know, I've had zero luck with those. <laughs> you know, One private test session, we uh, broke the transmission in half on blasting me the very first time I let the clutch out. Today, I feel like it's gonna be different for us. This hood was not on the car when we, uh, when we tested it here. This is the fiberglass hood that came on this car and it used to be really, really light. Um, however, I had some paintwork done to the car. I had the hood cut for the blower and then it got reinforced with, I don't know what, it almost looks like wood. And uh, it got reinforced and now the hood is really heavy. On the bright side though, the engine compartment is all painted. Valve colors got color, valve covers got color matched to the paint. We got all of the inner structure put back in the front end of the car so that the headlights aren't cross-eyed anymore. If you guys remember from the roadkill episode Newburn and I did, the headlights were hot glued into the grill and there was no structure back here. Uh, my friend Anthony Bell, brilliant paint guy, body guy, restoration guy, everything. Um, he blew the front end of the car apart, painted all this stuff, put it all back together. He even blew the new rear suspension back apart, which was rusting, and painted that quick performance nine inch rear end, the applied racing products, ladder bars, all that stuff is now yellow to match the car. And so, yeah, heavier, but way better looking. That is a Blower Shop 871 Teflon Strip Supercharger. It has most of the racing tricks done to it. The cylinder heads, are Dart Pro 1s. It's a Dart Big M cast iron block. It has Flotex stainless steel headers, quick fuel carburetors, an MSD Digital 7 ignition box. It's got an AFCO aluminum radiator. The engine is backed by a Gearstar Turbo 400 that's built with a Reed SFI approved case. It has a trans brake in it. It has a gear vendors bolted to the back of it. So we have an overdrive underdrive unit on it. So on the highway, you just push a button click it in overdrive and cruise. Uh, it's got a nine inch rear end in it and the drivetrain is solid in this. I mean, the, the motor's a mystery. We don't really know much about the internals of it, but it has run great this whole time. And, spicy. and with any luck today, we don't hurt it in the quest for eights. I don't think we will. Uh, we got the cage reserted. I rewelded some door bars in on the driver's side that you know there was, there was one cut out of it. It didn't have it when I got it. But um, the car is an old school bracket build. It was ladder bars with leaf springs. Um, it had an 850 cert cage in it. It's got a bunch of stickers from Orlando Speed World where it's won bracket races there. You know, beyond that, I don't know much about this car. Um, I just knew that Otto liked it and the family cared enough about it to keep it in the barn for 16 years. And so it's a, it's a pretty special car. Um, it's not trick by any stretch of the imagination you know it's it's not a four-lane car it doesn't have efi it's not even a light car this is a complete stock front subframe stock control arms i've never i haven't scaled it i bet this car weighs every bit of probably 35 or 3600 pounds but this engine makes some snot and it should be enough to go into the eights today if it goes into the eights with that pulley that'll be incredible because we're really haven't turned the wick up on this thing. We're running it on race fuel, not E85 or anything like that. Um, it would definitely benefit from running on E85, but that would mean completely redoing the carburetors for the extra fuel flow. But uh, if we need to, we'll stick a smaller pulley on it, but I don't know that it will, you know? I think this thing's just gonna go. So, excited to see this. Uh, right now we're going to check some fluids, put some heat in it, and then if we need to, we'll change the spark plugs. If not, we'll just get going. Look at this. These are time slips from two different events in two different places in the country. On the left, you have one of our last passes during Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0. And that was in 2021. With a 50-tooth pulley, we went 9.04 at 146 miles an hour. And that was with a 133 short time and a 576 eighth mile time. With a 56 tooth pulley in Alabama, we went a 132 60 foot, we went a 578, and we ran a 904 with way more mile an hour.
this is the timing pointer. These are the marks on the balancer. I couldn't see it and it looked like the timing was jumping around. So what we're gonna do is bump the starter without the engine running till I get to top dead center and mark it with a silver Sharpie so that it's easier to see. Got you. Okay, Joe, would you bump the starter? Just a small bump. Again, again, again. Hopefully this is accurate. So what we're looking for here is the amount of ignition timing advance. And uh, essentially on most engines, nearly every one I've ever encountered, um, you can't fire the ignition to a spark plug when the piston is at top dead center because then it's too late. By the time you've done it, the combustion process doesn't happen fast enough to put maximum force on the piston to push it back down. So in most engines, you have advance, which is a number of degrees in terms of crankshaft rotation where you fire the spark plug as the piston's on its way up so that as the piston reaches top dead center, you've already fired the spark plug and you create peak cylinder pressure to force the piston back down. Um, in a naturally aspirated engine, that could be anywhere from 28 to 40 degrees in something with boost like this, uh, you don't run as much advance because you have all this extra cylinder pressure created by the supercharger. Um, so right now we're gonna figure out what we have in this and then we're gonna dial in probably 25 or 26 degrees of timing as a baseline to start with. All right. I don't know how it happened, but it says it has 45 degrees of timing. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, let's loosen it and twist it. I have no idea why it had a 45 degrees of timing. Ready for me? Apparently. Oh, that's way too much timing. If the light's accurate, I don't have any reason to believe it's not accurate. When I say this is the mystery motor, I don't know what got done when it was rebuilt. I don't know what the ring gaps are. I don't know what the compression is. I don't know if when it got assembled, the guy actually verified that the pointer is lined up exactly with the number one piston when it's at top dead center. I don't know any of these things. They're all assumptions. To be honest, I don't trust the guy that built it, you know? And he disappeared and never gave me any paperwork and didn't believe in silicone. Literally didn't silicone any of the gasket surfaces on this motor. So when Uber and I put it in the car and started driving it, everything just started leaking. You know, timing cover, oil pan, rear main seal, all of it leaked. So I don't trust the engine builder as far as I could throw them. Um, and uh, why it's got... 24, 26? It should be, yeah, to start off at. I have no idea why this would have... Double, double that. Yeah. And I don't know that this is accurate. I mean, it seems to start pretty easily, but we may have start retard programmed into the box too, so... <laughs> Put some back in, it's down around 19 now. That's 23. I need about three more in it. Very close. I like it, baby steps, it's great. Close enough. Test pass number one. Let's go. pass you can see where we started here spun the tires real hard 
And if you follow, you'll see it heads out to the center line and then back over. So we'll see how it uh, this next round goes. It looks, it feels like they just sprayed the starting line after we just ran. All right, that was a 155 short time to 60 foot because uh, we were spinning. And so uh, we got to fix the whole shot. That'll be the next thing. And uh, we have no data acquisition in this car, so other than looking at video and reading spark plugs, we'll be doing it the old fashioned way. Yeah, that uh, that track. Uh, I don't think they sprayed it. Like it. Uh, it's not. It's not greasy. It's it's a little tacky out there. It did not want to go down a little bit in tires. It did not want to. It did not want to hook at all. What did you leave at? Uh, that was thirty eight hundred. We're not thirty eight hundred. Yeah, we're not giving it a. We're not giving it the beans. <laughs> not at all. It's fun though. There we go. Okay. Test number two. We really didn't change anything on the car, but I believe the track crew sprayed the starting line with some glue to make it a little stickier. So we'll see if it'll uh, hook and book instead of spinning the tires. Fun hard and it turned off. Not sure what that's all about. Oh, that's because I hit the ignition and turned it off. Getting ready for our third pass here. Uh, the first two have not gone well. We have blown the tires off both times. Looking at the video, it looks like it's trying to yank the front end and run out of travel immediately. So we want to slow the front end down. So we tightened up the uh, compression on the front shocks. Um, in the back, we think we might be running out of stroke in the shock. And what we're gonna do is lower the bottom collar of the coil spring. Then we're gonna raise up the lower mount on the coilover, because these are really long coilovers. We have enough shaft, we just need to put it in the right spot while maintaining the right height. So by adjusting the coil spring collar down and moving the shock up the mount on the bottom, the right height should stay the same and we should gain maybe about an inch more of travel in the shock. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna lower our tire pressure. So that last pass, we tried 13, we're gonna go down to 12. I also lowered the launch RPM from 3,800 to 3,500. And I feel like all those changes, which are way too many to be doing at one time, um, should work. And the reason we're doing the, this many changes at one time is not for science, obviously. It's because it's two o'clock, this ends at four o'clock. <laughs> We need to go. <laughs> you know me, I like big changes, lots of changes. So as soon as Joe gets the bottom mounts buttoned up, I'll suit up again and we'll go again. Did you get one side done? Yeah, one side's done. Still driving to the right. 
this cat. We are headed to a place over here in Alabama called Avid Speed. Yeah, about Starting 30 minutes from Alabama Road. International Raceway. The reason we're doing that is because both Mike and I really kind of screwed up and didn't bring any jets for the carburetors on rubber duck. And it is lean, definitely lean. We are here at Avid Racing. Thank you, Blake, for giving me the keys to your shop. So we've got carburetor stuff here. We'll bring this. You said go ahead and grab it all, which we will. I'm not sure what we need yet. Dude, how cool is that? Like, we literally don't know these guys. We were just at the track testing with them. And I went over to ask, hey, does anybody have any Holly Jets floating around? And Blake from Avid Speed here said, you know what? That's the one thing I didn't bring today, but they're 30 minutes away if you want to go get them. And I thought about it and went back and talked to Mike and he's like, yeah, let's do it. We got time. So I went over back and talked to him. He's like, well, there's nobody there, but here's the keys to my shop. I'll tell you where they're at. Just go get what you need. I can promise you this. Nobody track testing in California is going to hand you the keys to their shop when nobody's there and say, hey, go get what you need. Here's where we're at. We finally made a good hit. Not a great hit, but a good hit. It finally left the starting line. It finally pulled through first gear. And then after that, it kind of laid over a little bit and it was popping a little bit. And when I looked at the spark plugs, they said lean. And uh, John at C&J sent us some spare parts to adjust the carburetors, but those went missing. And somehow I came all the way to Alabama, rented a track and left every box of carburetor parts I have back at the warehouse because lately all we've done is EFI stuff. But thankfully the dudes at Avid Racing, is it Avid Racing or Avid Performance? Avid Speed. Avid Speed, the guys from Avid Speed who are like half an hour away, they used in. to have carburetors apparently because they had a box of jets. So we're gonna go from an 88 to a 92 on the primary side of our double pumpers. We're gonna go from 94 to a 98 on the secondary side. We're gonna turn up the launch RPM. With any luck, we're gonna haul butt. Okay, 76, 82, 88, 94. 94, we're gonna go, we're gonna take those out, those can go back. Okay. And then I wrote it down on the paper, I think we're going to 98s on the secondary side. We're going from 88s to 92s on the primary side. And I left everything at the warehouse at home. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine, everything is fine. Um, we're gonna get, we're gonna have some can you right now. can you walk up Jordan to the starting line and ask the guys what time this is over? Tell them we're working on the car. In about 20 minutes, we'd like to make another hit, but we'd like to make more than one hit. So we gotta figure we got about an hour of daylight left, which is probably enough to make two passes if we hurry. So we make one with this jetting, and if it doesn't get the job done, we throw a smaller pulley on the blower. You can use a flat blade screwdriver to do this, but it usually tears up the jet. Rosso makes this tool, or at least they used to, to thread those in without screwing this up. Because if you screw up this channel and you booger it all up, then that affects the flow of the fuel through the jet. So this is the blower pulley. If you look at the notches in it, it's designed for an eight millimeter belt, um, six bolt pattern. This is pretty common for most street superchargers or even some race stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, they come in different sizes from like 63 on down to like, I've seen ones as small as like 42, 40, somewhere around there. You can really overdrive a supercharger and the faster you overdrive it in relationship to the crank speed of the motor, the more boost you can make. But there's a point of diminishing returns. Uh, the faster you spin it, the more heat it makes. And eventually you make air that's just so hot that the molecules are way too far apart. The hot air doesn't make any horsepower. You want dense, crammed together molecules, really cold air. The colder the air, the more fuel you can deliver with that air, the more power you can make. Hot air, well, it doesn't make horsepower. It just makes noise. Because we've now reduced the size of this pulley, our belt is gonna be loose. Here. Oh, good, go for it. 
I made everything same same. We went up four jet sizes in the carburetor. I went down four, four tooth sizes in the blower. How's that for a tuna? Oh, it's good. We have any taps for the other holes either. <laughs> to be honest with you, we we'll probably put that home with all the carburetor jets. No, I don't think we have any of that stuff. You'd be surprised at what we have laying around. We just don't know we own it. Uh, I'm pretty sure we own it. We're just kind of minimizing what we carried in the trailer. <laughs> we, we figured if we, we really had to do something like that, we're done. We did a good job minimizing. So we rejetted the carburetors. We went up four sizes on the primary and secondary side. We reduced the blower pulley by four sizes. So we sped the blower up. Uh, what else did we do? I raised the launch RPM, 300 RPM from where it was. A lot of changes because we're running out of daylight here. Uh, it's entirely possible it smokes the tires at the hit. I don't know, we'll find out. All right, car, be happy, be fast, have fun. Let's do this. so smoky and sooty and fat in here right now. I didn't think four jet sizes would make that big of a difference, but it uh, it hardly wanted to rev for the burnout. Before it was making nice clean burnouts, motor setting great. Now it's just, it's very rich. Well, that was our best 60 foot of the day. We just picked our 60 foot up by five hundredths of a second which is good. Our best 330, might've been our best eighth, but after that, it was just a mess. It went 944 to 145 miles an hour. And it is really rich now. That was our best 60 foot of the day, but it's really rich. It is like I'm suffocating in there now. When you restarted it, it blew a bunch of black smoke out when you restarted the line. It, um, it didn't want to do a burnout. Like it just seems really overly rich now, which is weird because- It's weird because you should have more boost. The spark plugs are telling me that it was lean earlier. I mean, I, I we need to pull one. You put a new one in, right? I put two new ones in, yeah. I'll yeah, check them. let's pull them because we might need to take that jet back out and go the other way. Okay. It was weird though, like there's no fuel ring in there earlier, yeah. you know, and it was popping. 
but it was worse. It was popping way worse now, down the track. Oh, I didn't hear it. Oh, it yeah, sounded yeah. to me like top I, a second was like I, rev limiter or something. I near, oh, I hit the rev limiter, yeah. But I nearly lifted <laughs> because it, uh, third and fourth, it was just popping going down the track. Um, so yeah. All right, let me pull plugs. Or we just gave it more boost and it's lean again. Well, the only way to tell, let's look at the plug. Yeah. Let's look at one of those and we might have to put a, a bigger pulley back on it. We just made another hit. That was our fourth hit. Uh, virtually identical ET in the quarter mile, but it picked up everywhere else. I think because it's hooking pretty good now, we can turn up the launch RPM a little bit. That was a 3,800 RPM launch. I'm gonna put it at 4,000 this time. We've gone back to a larger blower pulley to take some air away from the motor because it's driving like it's lean. I don't know that for sure. It's, that's what it looks like to me on the spark plugs, but I don't know that for sure. Blower is gonna be nice and toasty now because we're hot lapping the car. We must be at the end of our test session because everyone's up there now. <laughs> well, that's a quarter to six. All right. Here, hold on. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah. Finished strapping you in, buddy. I got all excited. I got all excited about driving. <laughs> I forget about the safety part. We might be rushing a little bit. I just fired it up on seven cylinders. Joe forgot to put the spark plug back in. <laughs> That's that noise. They run better with eight. Yeah, it does. It usually runs faster. Why do I? Watch out. good it left really good but uh around i don't know right around 6,000 rpm this thing doesn't want to pull uh, for, for whatever reason that might have been a better pass i don't know we'll have to look at the ticket it wasn't an eight second pass there's no way yeah that was basically the same et that it ran before it was uh nine Oh no, I'm sorry, it went better. That was a 940, we picked up 500s. Uh, I went a 136, 60 foot, 391, 602. It was a little better, but it was still popping. And it still didn't feel like it wanted to accelerate. It's weird, like right around 6,000 RPM, this thing is just like, nah, homie, we're good. So that was first pass all day, I saw the actual tire recoil. It left so, good. Like we could probably turn it up a little bit. But it, hard off the launch. Yeah, that was our not our best 60 foot, but real close. But it was our best 330, our best 660. Um, it was our best quarter mile, but it, it went a 940. This thing is doing. Remember, you asked me if I last pass if I hit the rev limiter right. in first gear. I'm nowhere near it. It's breaking up at 6,000 RPM in every gear, and so at the top of every gear, it lays over, and out the back door, it's just like ba 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 ba. It's just not accelerating, and it doesn't matter if we put jet in it. It doesn't matter if we give it boost. It doesn't matter if we take away boost. I'm starting to think. Maybe an MSD blaster coil is no bueno for whatever boost we're making. So it's it's the same as like our first pass this morning. Like I said, first pass, I could hear it lay over top of second and at the end of the track. Yeah, it hasn't gotten any better. We've just made the whole shot of this car better. So the whole shot's pretty good. You know, 135, 60 foot for a car this heavy. 
know, with only a, that was a 4,000 RPM launch, we could probably give it more, but well, I think There's we no did good because we came out here and it didn't even want to leave the starting line. It didn't want to leave the starting line. So but now... We made a bunch of changes and it's leaving really good right now. Yeah, like I, I'm stoked we're headed in the right direction on the launch. Like you said, we could probably turn it up some more. But we really probably should go put it on a chassis dyno and find out why the ignition is breaking up. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe it's just the coil. I don't know. You know? So... We have some of those at the warehouse. Yeah. They're sitting right next to the holly jets. Right next to the carb jets, <laughs> the carb gaskets, the, all the stuff we didn't bring. Yeah. Um, and, but there's no guarantee that it fixes it. I, I really do think we should chassis dynamite. Okay. Because uh, we have no data acquisition on this car. We have a non-functioning wideband air fuel ratio gauge. Um, it's in the door. You know, yeah. Right. It fell off the dash earlier today. The Velcro, Velcro broke loose. Velcro did not hold it. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we don't know, you know, you don't know what you don't know. It'd be great to have some real info. So we should put it on a chassis dyno, make sure the tune is happy, make sure the ignition system is up to the task of what we're asking it to do, and then then we'll go. So, oh, which no. is good news. It does. It means not selling the car. Still things to work on, right? I love it. That's all good. I care about. I don't want to sell the car. I love this car. Okay. Well, then we'll keep working on it. It's one of my favorite ones in the whole fleet. They make tube front ends that bolt on the front of these things. Wow. We have a blown up 632. If we're doing that. Got an aluminum block. I mean, oh, bigger, bigger blower. Really making it I mean, we, there's things. There's things. There's there's things and parts and things. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking, you want a tube chassis the front end. I thought, well, good time to pull the motor apart and seal it up so it doesn't leak all over the place. But you just want to pull a whole new motor in. I'm okay with that too. Yeah, I mean, Smith Racecraft makes a complete tube front end. Hell, I think QA1 might make a tube front end for this now. Um, oh, and then there's a so snow much lighter. And well, yeah, there's then there's a snowball. Like there, then with this motor pro combo, you probably could get down to an 850, and then you're out of roll cage, and then start all over with, with complete new roll cage. You know, where does it end? I don't know. But, uh, determined to, for you to keep this car. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily want to get rid of it. I just don't want stuff to sit around that that do, doesn't need attention to work, you know, or has no hope of going faster. This has hope of going faster, so yeah, not in a hurry to sell. So we didn't get the eight, but it's... we're not done. And you'll see more of this beautiful masterpiece on a future episode of Finnegan's Garage. <laughs>